<sighs> okay, let's talk about this. So we finally got our first look at Sonic Frontiers and oh boy, if there's one thing I can say for certain, it's that I don't think this is what anyone was expecting. To put things into perspective, it's been half a decade since the last mainline entry in the series came out. How in the world has it already been that long? Jeez, that actually makes me want to cry. With forces in 2017 making people feel incredibly underwhelmed, after nothing but two small teasers last year with minimal actual footage and a vague holiday 2022 release, we finally got our first big look at the next mainline Sonic game, Sonic Frontiers. Everyone had a proper reason to expect this footage to blow people out of the water when we finally saw gameplay. Especially after we found out that the game was going to be an open world experience, with Sega themselves saying that they want to target high review scores and have this game be critically received well. And then they finally showed what the game was going to be like, and... Oh boy. So here's where I stand on Sonic Frontiers. I am in an extremely weird mix between vehemently unimpressed and desperately hopeful. But to be brutally honest, this looks rough really rough. You can't argue against clearly unfinished animations and egregious pop-in. This does not at all look like something that Sega would be showing in confidence, especially if the game is coming out later this year, which I am praying it doesn't after seeing this footage. There is an idea here that could work. Sonic is the one game that could really make use of an open, explorable environment that's fun to move around in with his speed, but there's so many flaws here that are getting in the way of that core concept through this footage that I don't know if they will be remedied whether or not this game gets delayed. One big thing that worries me is how they're handling Sonic's movement within this space. With a concept like an open world Sonic game, you would ideally want to be able to move around freely and have a lot of options and choice of how you can traverse across terrain both quickly and efficiently. But in Frontiers, we're scaringly seeing a lot of design patterns that games like Forces struggled with, where the game heavily relies on boost pads, grind rails, and designated segments to homing attack to automate Sonic's fast movement rather than let the player naturally achieve it through their own decisions. If Sonic's physics and movement were designed with him being able to traverse environments naturally in mind, you wouldn't need to rely on artificial elements to increase Sonic's speed, but unfortunately it looks like Sonic's movement isn't based on momentum yet again, which severely limits how fast players can go naturally and just feels worse. This was a problem in forces throughout the entire game, and it looks even worse here. Just look at this one part where Sonic somehow loses speed after going through a dash panel, despite him going downhill. None of the momentum carries with him, and that doesn't look or feel good at all. And this design scares me because it's almost counterintuitive to the idea of an open world game, because if the game has to rely on these tools to automate your speed, then you're not really going out and exploring in your own way, but rather just following designated paths that kind of just funnel you through where the designers want you to go, instead of actually actually going out and exploring. A game that does what Frontiers is trying to do well would be something like Insomniac Spider-Man, where Spider-Man's movement and the world around him are designed together to naturally give him opportunities to move around efficiently and smoothly, with direct input from the player without the need for automated segments. Frontiers is also wearing the Breath of the Wild inspirations on its sleeve, but if the game is going to have exploration be a big part of its premise, you have to have a world that looks fun to explore, and this isn't that. The world doesn't feel alive or have any real personality, and it just looks like a generic open landscape with vague technological details scattered throughout. There's no discernible vibe or aesthetic outside of a vague open feel that looks like any other generic open world, and all of the sonic elements within that world feel really out of place within it. Like all of these floating platforms and grind rails in the sky just look bad. Yes, they have to mechanically be there, but they're super jarring and don't look like they actually belong in the world. And so far, the world doesn't look like it's filled with actual interesting things to explore, but instead incredibly basic puzzles like turn this statue or light these panels to unlock a thing that we get absolutely no context for whatsoever. Like, why are we getting these collectibles? What's the reason and point to it all? I'm sure we'll find out eventually what the reasons are, but there's nothing to get excited about when 
we don't have any context. At the very least, the game's combat actually left me feeling a little bit more hopeful. Sonic's kit looks decently expansive with signs that there will be multiple different ways to take down enemies in cool ways, but there's still a lot of evident issues such as unclear and unfinished animations. And the combat ideas can be cool, but if Sonic's locomotion still isn't designed well, it's going to bring down the combat too. I see promise, but there are so many things that are riddling that core foundation that I don't think the game is going to be able to live up to it if it's still slated to come out this year. And the thing that bothers me the most about this whole situation is that I can't understand why Sega thought that this would be the best way to show off the game. People had every right to expect something impressive and polished given that it's been five years since Forces came out. I would have no problem if they were clear that the game isn't finished or ready yet, but communicate that because we are less than six months out from when this game is supposedly supposed to come out and it doesn't look ready at all. I think Sega's decision to present the game like this in long stretches of zero context segmented clips is hurting the perception of the game a lot too. Like is 7 minutes of Sonic running around in an open field with no rhyme or reason really the best thing to show as the first ever look at actual gameplay? Especially if it looks as rough as it does? There's so little to be excited about here or easily tell people about and I have no idea why they didn't just show a traditional trailer first that would have at least given us more context for the premise or objectives of the game. And it feels like it's way easier to market the game with something like that instead of just vague, overly long 7 minute clips with no context whatsoever. Give us a premise. Give us something to expect and look forward to. The fact that we have no clear idea of what the premise of the game is yet still is really baffling to me because it feels like that's something you would start with. Especially when we know that writers responsible for the Sonic comics, which are highly praised, are developing the story. So why why not show that? You would think given that Sonic has been on such a massive high after having two extremely successful movies that they would want to make sure that this game would be an absolute slam dunk and put their best foot forward with it. But who am I kidding? These are the same guys that put out Sonic Forces the same year that they let fan developers make one of the best received games in the entire history of the franchise. And it looks like history is repeating itself with how Frontiers looks anything but impressive. People have had the idea of an openly explorable Sonic game for a while, and with fan projects like Sonic Utopia showcasing what that potential could be like. And when I played stuff like Utopia, I always thought, this is cool. Sonic can feel really good to move around in in a full open environment, but how do you make a game out of this with full objectives and goals to accomplish instead of just running around? Granted, it's not up to these fan developers to come up with the answers to that question, but it is up to Sega if they're doing something similar with Frontiers. And so far, it just feels like looking at another fan tech demo that is arguably less polished and lacking in any kind of uniqueness. This does not look like something Sonic Team would be super proud to show off after 5 years of refinement and polish. It looks like after 5 years, Sonic Team is still just as confused as ever as to how to properly take the series in a new direction that the series desperately needs, and that's really upsetting. I don't know man, it just sucks that the last time I truly had a great time with a new 3D Sonic game was over a whole decade ago by now. And at this point, I want to be able to have something outside of external media like movies and shows to be excited about, but Frontiers isn't leaving me with much hope. There's a chance that this could be good, but as it stands right now, I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about Sonic Frontiers. We're supposed to be getting more information all June, so maybe things can turn around, but as of now, all we can do is wait and see. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and let me know what you think about Sonic Frontiers. I'll catch you guys later.